chores, everybody. I think you're already mic'd up. You don't need this. Yeah. So um, first of all, I want to say thank you for inviting me. Um, what a great group of people. This is surreal for me because usually I'm speaking between three and four people at a time. Uh, so having 100 people here is uh, a great opportunity to share what we do, a little bit about my story, and where uh, we're going. Um, first of all, I thought that was my headshot um, <laughs> earlier, so I'm surprised you took it down. Um, probably the best I've looked in a long time. My beard is white, so it looks a lot like me. Um, so just a little background, how I got to Cleveland, what we're doing. Uh, 1999, I was scouting for an HBO series called Band of Brothers, and that's when I discovered Cleveland. Um, really didn't know Cleveland existed back then, but I met somebody who said, oh, you should come see our city, and I'm like, okay. And at the time, we were looking for disused military bases in the United States. So if anybody's seen Band of Brothers, the first two hours take place in a place called Toccoa, Georgia, which um, obviously is in Georgia. We ended up shooting the entire thing in the UK, but for a good part of a summer, I was scouting the United States. And I had, came, I had come to Cleveland, and I was blown away by the city. Um, so it always resonated with me. But I was like, you know, what would I do here? You know, there's no industry here. Um, and then I moved off to London, lived in London for five years, met my wife there, somehow convinced her to move back to LA. Um, she hated it. So <laughs> an opportunity came to, to move to Cleveland. And you can imagine having just finished refurbishing your house in LA, and then literally two weeks later going, um, you know, I got this opportunity. And I'm working on another HBO show called Entourage. And I'm, you know, she's like, you're going to leave Entourage and move to Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> I can honestly say nobody has uttered that sentence ever. Um, and I'm like, yeah, let's give it a shot. And if it doesn't work out, we'll move, we'll move back to London. Because she wasn't happy in LA. We had just had a child, and I didn't want to live in LA. And we got here, and six months later, she's like, we should just sell our house and, and buy a house here. And that was 12 years later. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to create an industry. And the film industry, we're, we're, not, we're not inventing anything. This is, you know, there's 34 states now that have film incentives. You know, you look at states like Georgia that, you know, last year did $3.7 billion in direct spend. $3.7 billion. And I just want to bring some of that here. And along with that $3.7 billion, comes 100,000 jobs, and with an average salary of close to $100,000 a year. And then with that comes ancillary businesses that then move to Georgia that never would have moved to Georgia. And people say, well, why Georgia? Why New Mexico? Why you know, Pennsylvania or, or Kentucky or New York or Los Angeles? The thing that separates us from them is will is having the will to create something that doesn't exist in our community and thinking out of the box. And what's so exciting for me today, when I walked in here and I saw the people, and it was a diverse group of people and a lot of people I haven't seen before, is in order for this city to move forward, really, truly move forward, we have to throw a lot of stuff against the wall. It can't be one fix. It's not going to be just the RNC. It's not going to be just block land, which you know, were all good tries and, and, and definitely had the right idea behind them. But we keep looking for that one golden nugget that's going to fix our city. And right now, we're at, what, 360 plus thousand people. We used to be at a million people. So what's going to draw people? And at the end of the day, the film industry, so everybody here watches content, I'm sure, right? Everybody watch some form of content on your iPad or thing? Raise your hand, right? Right? Everybody watches it. But nobody really understands how it got from you know, idea to being on your TV or your, your small screen or your phone or your iPad. Everybody just assumes that Netflix Voila, here are all these movies, and they just show up. 
But the act of making those movies is a business, and the act of creating that content is a business that pays well and encourages people to move to certain communities. Now, a lot of people don't necessarily want to live in Georgia, but if you can work in an industry you love and kind of afford to build, you know, buy a home, you know, that's going to be appealing to you. You know, I've been to Georgia. I've been to Louisiana. I've been to most of the states. And we are so much better geographically, architecturally. We have diversity here. Like, that's crazy, right? There's nothing you can't do here except for mountains and desert. <laughs> nothing. You want an ocean? You go out to Lake Erie. You go paddle your little rowboat in the middle of the, the Lake, Erie, Lake Erie, and you tell me you know exactly where you are. You could be in the middle of nowhere in any ocean in the world. We have rivers, we have covered bridges, we have urban, we have suburban, we have you know, shaker style homes, we have ranch style homes, we have purpose-built communities, and we have communities that have been around forever. We have small villages. There's literally nothing you can do here. And the only thing that keeps us from moving forward at least with this industry, and I'm sure it's a lot of other industries, is will. We have to have the will to go out and start looking at things that don't make us necessarily comfortable. You know, kind of like, listen, you look at what Blockland did. Listen, they rallied a whole community. Most people, anybody understand Blockland? Right, right? Yep, they had a whole convention at the convention center talking about something none of us understand, which is, <laughs> Which is fine, I mean, it's a good thing to be throwing something, but why just that? Why does it have to be just, why can't it be a film industry? Why can't, you know, we had this film school here that was built by um, uh, one of the architects was a guy named Gary Bastian. And Gary built Chapman University's film school. And he beat LA, built LA Center st uh, stages and Manhattan Beach stages. And so now the kids that are going to this school have the opportunity to be in an environment that's as good as anyone, anything, anywhere. And the, the whole goal of this is to make sure that those kids, when they get out of school, have a job and don't have to leave. We don't want to have this amazing facility here and amazing opportunity for these kids and then make it so that, oh, we're, you know, because our incentive is at $40 million right now. And we were out of money two months after that money was allocated. And so basically, we're selling air, right? Well, maybe somebody will drop out. That is not the way to do business. We need to raise the incentive to $100 million so that we can be globally competitive. We need to, we need to look at this as an industry, and I want to build it to a level that is literally, you can be in London, you can be in, in, in Atlanta, Georgia, you can be in New York, you can be in LA, and literally, it's the same type of industry, same quality of crew, same quality of assets, and then people walk into Cleveland, and the one thing that, well, not the one thing, but one of the things that really separates us is if you make $100,000 in Cleveland, Ohio, and you're working on these films, you can buy a home. You can have a quality of life. You make $100,000 in New York or in LA, you're buying a P.O. box, right? <laughs> you're not buying a home. Like, you can't, that's not even a down payment on a home. That doesn't even buy you a room. You're living in LA, you have four roommates. You're living in New York, you have nine roommates. You're living in Cleveland, you own the block. <laughs> I think that's a pretty good sell. And I don't think there's a lot that we, you know, we have three sports teams, the quality of life is amazing, but the one thing, and I keep, I'll keep coming back to it, is how we think of ourselves. Because we don't, and I, and, and I know there are organizations that do, but collectively, which is another problem, that we don't work collectively, that we're siloed, but we don't go after it because we don't think it could happen here. Because all I hear is, why would anybody come to Cleveland, Ohio? Why would they come here? Doesn't the cold bother you? You know, doesn't, you know, is that gonna affect people? And I'm like, you know, if, if Pittsburgh and Detroit and Milwaukee and um, Minneapolis all thought about whether the cold affected them. <laughs> Nobody thinks about that except for Clevelanders. They're always looking for a reason for people not to come. And the reason the people aren't coming 
is because we're not giving them the opportunity to really come in a real way. We kind of dabble, we kind of do everything half-assed. And we need to commit, not just the Film Commission, we need to commit as a community that, you know what, we're gonna throw so much shit against the wall. <laughs> and we're gonna see what sticks. And then if it doesn't stick, we're not gonna be afraid of failure. We're gonna go out and we're gonna do it again until we get it right. And then we're gonna get one company and two companies and small industries coming here. And we're slowly gonna build up the population in Cleveland. And I know you didn't come to hear about my speech about Cleveland and everything, but this is tied to it. This is, the reason I do what I do is because I don't want my kids growing up in a city that goes, God, we didn't, we didn't take risks. We were risk adverse. And I'm not saying that there aren't amazing things going on in this city, but you can't argue with the statistics that everybody's throwing out, no matter what we say. And we could only drink so much beer. Because if you, <laughs> right? I'm just saying. And I like a good beer like anyone else. And I like the choice but it's not going to save the city. And craft beer has been being made for 400 years. We didn't invent it, right? We do it pretty well, but again, it's part of our quality of life, but it's not what's driving industry. People aren't gonna move here because I can get a, a really good beer and I can get a lot of it. People are gonna move here because they're job opportunities. They're gonna, people are gonna move here because those job opportunities pay well. And that's why they're gonna move here. And that's really what we are. We're an economic development and job creating organization. Yeah, we do it through movies. And you know, my wife gets mad at me when a movie comes to town and she's like, who's in it? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't even care. <laughs> what I wanna know is who they're hiring, what local companies they're using, you know, and the goods and services, and making sure that our community is truly served by those productions. And when people make the argument that you know, a lot of people, not a lot of people, there are two organizations that make this argument and they don't even understand the tax incentive because they keep saying, well, it's taxes that aren't coming to the, comp the state. And at the, end of the day, that's not, at the end of the day, that's not how ours is structured. So I do ask the two groups that are criticizing what we're doing to actually read the legislation and understand what we're trying to do before you criticize something. Because I get it philosophically, um, you don't believe in incentives, so no matter what you do, it's going to be a negative argument, but at the end of the day, it's about creating jobs and bringing people to Cleveland, and we need to do whatever it takes, period. And if that means creating an incentive, so let me give you an example. So about five years ago, there were these two local directors, and they're doing these two movies, very, very small movies um, for Marvel, and <laughs> they came to me, and they literally said, Ivan, if you build it, we will come. If you create this infrastructure and get an incentive that's big enough for these projects, and you trigger, that will trigger infrastructure, which is sound stages, and I don't want to just refurbish warehouses. What I really want to do is I want to create ground up, state of the art production, because that's what we're worth, right? We're worth doing it as good, if not better, than anywhere else. And we want to show the world that we are better than anybody else. So, we left, in that particular year, close to a billion dollars on the table. Literally a billion dollars. This is not an exaggeration. This is not like a movie coming to town, saying, oh, we're looking at Cleveland, and then we count it as a you know, lost business. This is like, if you build it, we would have come, and we would have spent that money here. A billion dollars. This sort of city cannot afford to lose a billion dollars in cash dumped in the middle of your community. We can't afford to do it. We have to stop saying no. We have to say yes to everything. We, sometimes even being strategic gets in our way. So now, you know, big speech comes along and now we've got five different groups acting separately, doing studies on what's the problem with Cleveland. That's great, but by the time we get done with those studies, we kind of know what the problem with Cleveland is. Like we know what the solution is, and the solution is bringing jobs. 
The solution is making it easy for people to come here who want to come here, not a couple of people and not just one group of people, but all people. We need to make it easy. We need to, whatever it takes to make it easy for people to do business here, we need to do. And so our organization, that's what we do. We make it easy. You know, when a movie comes here, we try to provide good concierge service. We try to offer them advice. We help them through whatever part of the process that they want, they need help with. We don't get in their way. We don't pretend that we're doing, you know, we're producers and directors and, and making their movie. We're here to help them. And the thing is, we want the, every single person, when they leave this city, to be an advocate for the city. To walk away after doing their project going, I had no idea. If we knew, if I got funded by for every dollar, if I got a dollar for every time somebody said, I had no idea who knew, I, I wouldn't need to be here. We'd be, you know, flush with cash. You know, we could be doing our, you know, our mission, you know, on steroids. Because people come here and they are blown away. And the thing is, is that Clevelanders, I try to keep them away from Clevelanders. Because... <laughs> at least at the beginning, because eventually you gotta work with you guys, right? But at, the, but at the beginning, I don't want any of that, like, why are you here? Why did you choose Cleveland? What makes Cleveland so special that you wanted to do your project here? If you don't know that, you should leave, <laughs> right? So I keep them away. I keep them away, and we introduce them to people that are positive, that are like, well, how can I help you? What, what can we do to help you make your job easier? And that's what we try to do. So that when people leave, they're advocates for the community um, and, and spread, the word, uh, you know, spread the word. When I go and I travel, whether it's London or New York or LA, which is where I spend most of the time trying to attract business because we want to be globally significant, most people don't have a negative perception of Cleveland. I would say 95% of the people have zero perception of Cleveland. They couldn't tell you anything about our city. I don't find that as a negative because I find that as an opportunity. I get to paint the picture, right? I get to describe what the city looks like and what the assets are. So when they get here, they're not thinking, oh, you know, we're full of crime or we're whatever this is and, you know, whatever the, you read in the news or the plane dealer or whatever. They, they get to decide for themselves, and we get to help decide for them how they're going to view this city. And there is no neighborhood they're afraid of. There is, they want to see everything. They just, like, they soak it up. They lap it up because, one, you haven't seen it in every movie you've seen. So now when you go to a movie, you, you know, you see Atlanta or Louisiana, and you're like, oh, I've seen that in 15 different ways. And... So creatively, it makes it more interesting for them. And also it makes it more in interesting for them because they get to put it on the screen because it costs less to film here. And costing less is not like a, it's not a bad thing. It's a bad thing if the service isn't as good or you're not getting um, the same thing. But the truth is, it's just cheaper to do it here. It's not like the quality of the crew is worse. It's not like the locations are different and they're trying to put a square peg in a round hole like they do often in Louisiana and some of the other places. They really get to do what they want to do the whole time. And it's really exciting to them. And so, you know, we had a movie recently come in and they were determined that they were going to another city. And they even told me, like, afterwards, like, we were going to another city. We, we just... You paid for us to come to Cleveland, so we were being polite. But they never went to that other city, right? They found, it, they found what they needed here in Cleveland. And so collectively, and I ask this of you guys, because there's a lot of organizations, a lot of people in this room that are doing really, really cool things. We need to work together. You know what? I found out the other day there's 14,000 nonprofits in Cleveland. And, nobody, and very few work, I shouldn't say nobody, but very few people work together because we're all worried about our funding, right? We're all worried about how, well, if you fund us, that means somebody else is not gonna get funded, or if you fund that organization, you know, and, and it's all about collaboration. We have to stop thinking that way. We have to collaborate. These organizations, it's going to raise all boats. If we work together, 
and we show, because people see when we're not collaborating. People see how we behave. They, they don't, it's not like we're, it's a secret. People can say, well, you know, you know I tell a crew all the time, please don't, if, if they didn't hire you, speak nicely about somebody else. I also tell this to vendors. If they don't hire you, don't say, well, if you go with that other guy, he's gonna, or, you know, he's gonna, not, he's gonna overcharge you or, or they're not as good as we are. Be positive. You know, say, you know what, I'm, you know, I'm sorry you didn't choose us, but you know, this person's gonna do a good job for you. And, and, and people wanna hear that. They wanna hear that we're working together. They don't want this baby of politics that we get into in Cleveland, Ohio. You know, they wanna hear that we're an adult city who can all get along and are helping each other. And it is a mindset. It is just a straight up mindset. And I'd love to hear your questions and I'd love for somebody to argue with me about this. Because at the end of the day, what makes Georgia happen and, and New Mexico happen and you know, these other, like New Mexico, for example. So the, the governor of New Mexico ran that she's gonna uncap the incentive. Netflix just bought Albuquerque Studios, okay, which was built on land owned by Forest City, coincidentally. Um, they just bought uh, Albuquerque Studios and they've pledged to spend a billion dollars in New Mexico. State of four million people. Oil and gas is their main, you know, literally the furthest thing from the arts as possible. But they decided that they're gonna go there and they're gonna spend a billion dollars in production there. You know how many people that hire? So now, in order to do that, they're gonna raise the incentive because they don't wanna be just a Netflix state. They wanna still be open for business for everyone else. And they're looking at ways to make their incentive better, more user friendly, and they're taking the initiative. Georgia, the only thing that separates us from Georgia is will is the desire to have this industry in their state. That's all that separates us from Pennsylvania. You know, New York and LA are a little different. They're more industry towns. You know, most of the stuff is generated out of Los Angeles and some of it out of New York. And you know, New York is New York. So, you know, you're not, I'm not, we're not competing with them. But the only thing we're competing with, because I don't think we're competing with anyone, we're competing with ourselves. We're competing with our desire that we want this industry here. And I'm, like I said, this is not the savior of Cleveland. But think about when you watch a, t a TV show and you go, oh, I wonder where that was shot. Or the, the tourism that it creates afterwards that is a byproduct of all the production that you have in your community. Think about those things. Think about the types of people that, that are gonna come through our city and discover it and want to live here because they can make, they can make a really good wage in doing something that's really, really cool and really, really fun, and and have a great quality of life. You're not giving, you know, you want to go to a basketball game. But the other thing is we can't divide our um, our our city by our how well our teams do. We gotta stop that because if one more person tells me this has been a great year because the Browns just this being at 500. Oh my God, this is awesome. 2019 is going to be awesome, right? Stop defining ourselves like that. That's a, that's a great like afterthought. That's a great thing to have and it gives you civic pride, but it doesn't create jobs, right? They play eight games a year, period, right? So we want to be able to create year-round sustainable long-term jobs that pay well because you know what, we keep training people for minimum wage jobs. And we need to start pe training people for jobs that aren't, that, that, that pay well and can give people the quality of life that we all wanna have. So I'll get off my horse now. <laughs> but I really do believe in our mission. Um, I, I feel like, you know, the way we go about it, and I'll just be really quick, is we do it through advocacy, workforce, and attraction. Advocacy, we wrote the incentive for Ohio. We got it doubled to ten, ten, um, from 10 to $20 million. We got it doubled again from 20 to $40 million. And now we're working to raise it to $100 million so that we can be globally competitive. That all comes out of our, our office. We do attraction. We have Mike Went. Where's Mike? Mike right here, who's an amazing production coordinator. So what we do is we attract. So I'll go to LA. I meet with pretty much everybody. And we are meeting with, you know, if, if, you had, if you sat in the meetings I had, you would be like, oh my God, they want to come. They really want to come. But we don't have the tool to get them here. So we got to create that tool because they're not like, 
they're not blowing smoke. They're looking for opportunities. This is win-win for everybody. This needs to be a win for the studio. And they're not going to exploit you. The whole, they understand, the whole industry understands that incentives are important. And the reason they're important is because it gives them a, you know, 30% off of what they're going to spend. And they understand that the way to do it is local, you hiring locally, using local goods and services, and not exploiting the crew, but working together with the community. And we've had so many movies and projects and TV shows and commercials come in here, and that's what they do. They want to use local goods and services. They want to hire locally. It's in their interest to do that. So if anybody tells you differently, they're lying. So, you know, and then the third thing is workforce. Listen, when, when you know what's surreal is standing in this building. Surreal has been talking about a film school for 10 years and then finally having the opportunity to stand in this building thinking, oh my God, this is it. Because in Cleveland too, we have to have tangible assets. Like the reason that the film industry doesn't resonate is you can't touch it. You know, if, if, if a painter paints a painting, you can touch it and you can hang it on your wall and it's real. For some reason, people don't understand that the content you watch on TV is real. It's straight up manufacturing. At the end of the day, they produce this little SD drive that has a movie on it that's distributed globally around the world, right? So at the end of the day, it's, it's straight up manufacturing. And you know we need to have a trained workforce like any other industry. But you have to be able to speak the language and understand the culture of this industry. It's not like, you know, you can't just, if you're a podiatrist, you're not going to a heart surgeon um, to get your feet fixed, right? You're going to a podiatrist. You want to go to somebody that does this 24-7, 365 days a year, and that's an expert at it. And it's the same thing with the film industry. You want to be skilled. And what this building does is that it, it teaches people the skills they're going to need to be successful in, in the media industry and, most importantly, opportunities to stay in Cleveland, Ohio. So, I'm done. I'm, I'm happy to take questions, or if you have an argument, I'd love to get into it. Is this on? Can you guys hear me? I just want to say thank you. Uh, we've got about 10 minutes or so. Sure. I'll, I'll just give you the, the wave when we should do like last question or something. Okay. But otherwise, if you guys have any questions at all, just raise your hand. Ivan, I'll let you take it. Yes. Uh oh, not all? <laughs> really? That's, that's what I was saying. I'm not, I'm agreeing with you 100%, like 100%. But we, what it does though is having that question stops us dead in our tracks so often. Like because we don't know what to do to move that forward. So often we take these tiny little baby steps that don't accomplish anything or we just don't do anything at all because we can't, until we figure out the fix, we don't move at all. What I'm saying is I agree with you 100%, but we gotta keep, we gotta move. Like, and if we see something that works, we should jump on it, wherever it is. Because, you know, with the, the film industry, it's not just, I mean, this is a great film school, and I probably should have spoke about other things, but the access to this industry, there are many points to that. So one is, there's a program at Tri-C that's really, really good. And the other is, we're starting this thing called Film Skills, which is an online program, because we want, everybody 
to have access to this industry. I don't care who you are or what you are, you should have access. And going, you know, I learned something um, not too long ago that like 20% of high school kids have no idea what they want to do when they, when they enter their senior year. I want to get to those 20% and like, because how many people here want to be grips? <laughs> right, right, one person, <laughs> right? Because most of you don't know what a grip is, and if you, you know, that's the thing. So we need to like go, but you know what? Making a grip, you can make $85,000 a year and have a really good living and, and do all that. So we need to help educate people into what the actual jobs are. But I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. I could not agree with you more, but we can't not do anything. We have to keep doing it, and hopefully we'll get there one day. I hope, I hope your comment is obsolete in five years from now. I really do. Yes? How do you decide what movies, TV shows, and commercials would be suitable or were good choices to film in the greater Cleveland area? Well, what's great is I don't have to decide. They get to decide. So we don't choose what movies come here. It's first come, first serve. Uh, we go out and we try to throw a huge net out there. And, you know, some movies are perfect for Cleveland. Some movies, you know, we've had a lot of movies rewrite for Cleveland once they got here. So people don't even know it's right for them. But we give everybody opportunity to come here, look, touch, feel, and um, they get to decide if they want to shoot here or not. So, yes. That's great. So clevelandfilm.com will have letters on the website that you can write to your, your state senator, your, your state representative, and the governor's office, letting people know that this is something you want. I encourage you to do it for 20 industries that we want here. Um, but we'll, give, we'll help people uh, uh, navigate that as we're, we're working on a, a plan right now. Um, how to execute since everything's new in 2019 in, in terms of the legislature. Yes? So I also moved here I think, about 10 years ago. Um, and I'm currently freelancing, but I used to run a local rental house. And um, there's a lot of talent in town already. There's a strong commercial production uh, that's happening in town. And I'm, so I guess I have a two part question, which is like, how do we up for, you know, make that transition from commercial to larger you know, film production? And also, how do we Well, so the, you know, your question is, is, is interesting because one of the things that everybody's like worried about their job and protecting their job. So one, if you're really good at what you do, you're gonna get hired on everything. So if you're good, but if you're just mediocre at what you do, there's a chance that somebody who does your job better and is coming along is probably gonna get that job. So one is to make sure you keep up your skills so that they choose you all the time. Right? Two is if we have a $100 million incentive, we're going to have a lot of production here. So it's not going to be just one thing coming at a time. It's going to be many things coming. So what it's going to, need, what it's going to require is not that we're one crew deep, that we're two, three, four, five crews deep. So there's a tremendous amount of opportunity for a lot of people to work in this industry. But I will say, if you're not good at what you do, you're not, just because you're doing it now, because we don't necessarily maybe have the, the strongest crew base, doesn't mean you're gonna get to do it later. So you wanna make sure that you're good. This is about being, this is a center of excellence. This is not a center of mediocrity. Yes, ma'am. What are some projects coming to Cleveland that you're excited about? Well, I'm excited about anybody that will spend money here. <laughs> um, specific this year? No, because we're out of money. So that's part of our problem is that the money's been allocated. We have a couple projects that say they're going to go um, that have been allocated, but um, we'll see. I mean, I was just talking to my wife this morning. I'm like, it's not real till it's real. It's not real till they show up. So, um, uh, but we, we anticipate, you know, we're focusing on raising the incentive right now. We'll service the projects that come and um, we'll hopefully build on that so that you know, you can be working all the time and everybody else that wants to work can, 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 can work. Do you have any programs for um, high school kids? Like you said, you've been out to high school kids. 
Sure. I mean, the film skills program that we're going to be introducing, I think probably late February, February, early March, is available to anybody. It's online, and it is really, really good. And it's put on by, you know, it was interesting. I, you know, I get solicited a lot, and I was looking at the program, and I was kind of like rolling my eyes. Here's another program. But I look at it. I look at everything. And I was like, oh, my God, they're speaking my language. Like, this is exactly what people and kids should know. Um, to break in the industry and the specifics, and it breaks down to, um, and it will eventually be a certificate program, but that could, it could be, you know, listen, it's open to sixth graders. So just look, look out for it, clevelandfilm.com, um, for, for early, late, late winter, early spring. I just wanted to say last question. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So while you're going through a program, I encourage you to constantly get internships, constantly learn the industry as you go with school. And graduating is come see us, and we can tell you how to you know, get your first job. We're happy to talk to people all the time about what are the first steps you need, um, point people in the right direction, um, you know, help them with resumes or whatever it is they need in order to, to get that foot in the door. We can help you get the foot in the door, but we can't open the door. The door, really, it's, it's competitive. There are a lot of people who want to work in this industry. And you have to have this fire in the belly because it's 16 hours a day. And it is hard work. And it's exhausting. And you may not always want, you know, if you're doing lockup, you know, at the perimeter of a, a location, you know, you're going to go, what am I doing here? But it, if you're there, standing there, what am I doing here? You should look for something else. And if you're standing there going, oh my god, I can't believe I'm on a movie set, and this is going to be my career, then you've, you've made the right choice. Because that's what happened to me. When I, my first movie, I was on a movie um, called Chud 2, Cannibalistic Humanoid <laughs> Underground Dwellers <laughs> Part 2. Classic movie, one of the best movies ever made. <laughs> And I got there, and I got there on my first day, and they handed me a walkie-talkie. A walkie-talkie. I'm like, I am so freaking cool. And I couldn't imagine being anywhere else. And I had never had that feeling before. And that's what drove me. And then I was like, whatever you want. Thank you very much. May I have another? Thank you very much. May I have another? I'll do whatever you ask me to do. Because I just felt like this is what I want to do. And you have to have that fire in the belly. You ca it can't be, well, I kinda I'm kind of i thinking about it. You have to have the passion. Because it is hard work. So many kids go to LA. And they come back in a year, and they say they come back for family. And I'm like, that's code for, I didn't have the fire in the belly. Because the truth is, is if you have that passion, for whatever you do in life, not just the film industry, if you have that passion, you can't imagine doing anything else. You can't imagine being anywhere else. And that's really what's required to work in this industry, no matter what aspect of the industry um, or what you're doing for life, but certainly in the film industry. Thank you again so Thank much. You.